uh, we came here about five, six years ago and started looking at the site to make sure that we have uh, uh, protection for the plants that are here. For example, this is a, a donis plant that's found just in this plot. And you can see we protected this plot so that people don't step on it. And it's very unusual plant and just found in this area. There was already some, some plants like these sage and roses here. Uh, but basically we have protected some endogenous plants. And I showed you earlier uh, the uh, orchids that we have here. Here is more of these orchids. And so again, you know, the protection of this plot to native orchids, which are endangered plants. And we will walk down into the garden. Some volunteers helped us in setting this up. So for example, Yelena was a volunteer with us and she helped with uh, preparing this path. And you can see how rich the biodiversity of this area is with different plant species here. So for example, here's another ditch and then we have the terracing which helps protect the uh, land from uh, degradation and enriches the soil. Uh, when we studied the area, we know exactly what species of plants are found where. And this passageway that we are, as you see, is in a rocky area. Doesn't have as much plants as up the hill. And so we protect the area up the hill. We do have some bee colonies here. And that is uh, for fertilization, uh, pollination of the plants. That's important. This is a bird watch area that people have set up. Uh, volunteers come and do these things. Um, you can see here, uh, from here basically, our rainwater harvesting system. Basically, most of the water from the hill is also brought into this pool, uh, which stores it for our usage for plant uh, watering and so forth. Uh, the water is circulated uh, up uh, to a smaller pool up here, and the smaller pool acts as a filter, but also as oxygenation for the water as it comes back. The energy for the motor to run is the solar energy which you see on top of the building there. So, and you can hear the frogs now, because this is the spring season, the frogs start to... All the passageways are also lined up with these um, rosemary plants, which help in uh, feeding the uh, bees, both the domestic bees, but also the uh, wild bees with the, in the, with the solitary bees. In. And you can see how pretty even the passageways are uh, with the flowers and stuff like that. Now we have frogs here. So this is a long-legged buzzard that was brought to us because tail is damaged and people basically uh, hunt sometimes animals and we try to rehabilitate them and release them when we can. So this one is uh, one of the last animals that we have. We released a hyena and we released uh, two uh, eagle owls before we released foxes, snakes and so forth. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful animal. Now this is another place we did an aviary uh, to rehabilitate again injured birds. And now we don't have any, thank God. We do have a peacocks. We have chickens and a rabbit. But this is a kind of ideal farm, as you see here. We have a community garden also, where kids can come and plant things, like 
chickens, beans and cabbage, lettuce, etc. So they can plan things, parsley. And there's more of them there, all the lines of... Uh, basically, this is our animal room. Our animal room uh, is used now for some domestic beetles and small animals that were there before, but we are trying to restructure it as a children's uh, playground. 30 children with their families have plots here and have used this garden. This was a project funded by the Rotary, Rotary Club of Bethlehem and uh, currently we have more products and we know what to do with uh, because of the coronavirus people are not coming here uh, so this still needs a lot of tending you can see a lot of uh, uh, weeds growing around the plants so they need more tending as you see here also so hopefully we will recover from this coronavirus thing quickly and come back to doing things. You can see this is a, a basically a nursery that's made from recycled plastic bottles and that's to grow things including we have the saplings of trees and others. And then uh, the uh, greenhouse. The greenhouse It's much warmer in here, uh, nicer. But you can see here we have cauliflower, cabbage, you know, strawberries, etc. Shards, parsley. But uh, but these systems here are called aquaponic systems. And aquaponics, you can see some fish. It's difficult to see them because of the cloudiness of the of this. Uh, water but uh, there is tilapia fish here the fish produce uh, nutrients of course like nitrogen and others that they consume uh, the food they produce the nutrients and nutrients are recycled into these beds with uh, lava rocks basically in these plants like this shard and this basil which is very nice smell this is uh, all grown in the water that comes through the system here. The nice uh, fruits that are produced from this aquaponic system. It's an olive tree, basically a new olive tree. Olive tree is uh, highly revered by Palestinians because we use it for not just for food like the olives but also and oil, but also we use the wood. We use the leaves, we use everything of it. Yes, Israel has uprooted many, many thousands, million, actually a million and a half fruiting trees were uprooted. Most of them are olives. They were uprooted uh, to build just a wall that's around the area that's now keeping us in Bantu stands or ghettos. So this destruction of our uh, native, you know, trees and our livelihood is a big problem for us. Uh, this is the compost area. And you can see volunteers and staff bring their uh, leftover material to compost here and then use it as fertilizer also. And see again, you know, that this needs a bit of tending. Again, in, in, we need a few more volunteers and staff to tend to these and clean them up a little bit. But this can be even taken as seeds and regrown. The good thing about this in the summer, all you have to do is put some water in these top bottles and it drips down into the, into the bottles below and keeps them moist. Uh, thousands of Palestinian children come to this uh, museum in normal times and we are doing this video in unnormal times because of the coronavirus of course but that's why we hope that people will see the beauty of this place you can see these flowers for example that were planted here how well 
they are doing an enriched soil now. Now we go up. And here again, much work needs to be done here. Uh, all of this uh, extra plants needs to be removed. But it has become so rich, that it's even more rich than we need for, for our purposes. The way we envision this wall becoming is all green wall with climbing plants like those over there. And this area will be clean and this area will have children's playground, uh, children's toys. And this is coming and we need help in doing this. So we are looking for volunteers to do this. This volunteer drew these uh, drawings on the, on the walls. Uh, she was an American volunteer. We have a lot of work that we could use volunteers in. So anybody watching this can come and volunteer anytime. This is where the, the staff and the volunteers have their lunch uh, during work days. We usually eat things that we produce. So we have a lot of material, obviously. A lot of these plants that you see here are edible, and we can cook them. Now we are going up the hill to the photography. 